Hey folks, Eric here at Avid, and I was out in the shop thinking about a good quick tips video to do, and I thought, let's talk about Z-zeroing and the two different ways you can do it. Those two different ways are zeroing to the top of your material or zeroing to your spoil board. And there are advantages and disadvantages of each, and let's talk about them. So let's talk about the most common one, which is zeroing to the top of your material. So let's say I wanted to cut out a profile out of this piece of cherry. Well, I would put my touch plate on top of the material, touch off to the top, and then my Z zero would be set to the top of this one inch thick piece of cherry. And that would mean when I drive my bit over on top of this workpiece, we put the bit right on top, my DRO uh, for Z would read zero. In my CAM software, whether that's uh, VCarve, Aspire, or Fusion 360, I tell the CAM software that I've zeroed to the top of the material, and I also tell it the thickness of that material. So the toolpath that I would run to cut out a shape out of here, I would probably run this at 1.02 inches deep, just to cut all the way through the material, plus a little extra, gouge into my spoil board a little bit, but it would ensure um, a nice clean cut all the way through the material. Now the way to think about the math, the G-code math, is that the math starts by putting the bit on the top of the material and pushing it down 1.02 inches. And this will happen maybe in multiple passes, it depends on how you have your tool pass set up. But the critical thing to think about is you're starting from the top and you're pushing that bit down 1.02 inches. Okay? So zeroing the top of the material, really, really common. You can do it on all kinds of different jobs. It certainly would work fine on a scenario like this. It would also um, work fine and in fact is critical on stuff like a V-carve. So on a V-carve like this, you kind of almost don't care about the thickness of the material unless it's really, really thin. But what's critical about a V-carve is that uh, for a V-carve to look good, you want that Z0 to be perfectly on top of the material. So you get nice crisp corners, good looking serifs, and your letters are nice and straight. If your uh, Z0 is too high or too low, you're not gonna have a very good looking uh, V-carve. So um, certainly with V-carves, you always want a Z0 to the top. Now, let's talk about Z0ing to your work surface, your spoil board, and why you might wanna do that instead of zeroing to the top of the material. So imagine you're, you are making cabinets, and cabinets oftentimes have a lot of dados and a lot of rabbits in the joinery. And these are joints that you want to fit consistently. So not too tight, not too loose, just the right amount of room for a little bit of glue in these joints. And uh, you know, especially if you're making a lot of cabinets, like a whole kitchen's worth, and you're doing 10, 20, 30 sheets of plywood, um, you want every single joint, every single time to fit consistently. What you don't want is to have to Z0 to every single sheet of plywood because anybody who's worked with stacks of plywood knows that every sheet is a little bit different in thickness. So the way you would do z 0 for something like this is to actually Z0 to your work surface. If you're on EX control, you can just go into your work coordinate system table and just set your Z0 to literally zero. Um, any positive number in there uh, means your material has a thickness, and if you just set it to zero, that means you're saying your Z0 is right here. Uh, watch the touch plate utility video to learn how this works in more detail. But essentially for cabinetry, it's best to zero to your work surface. Why might you ask? Well, the math for your cut depth works a little bit differently. So this rabbit here, needs to be, uh, we'll say, exactly a quarter of an inch thick, and we want this dado to always be a little bit over a quarter of an inch thick so that we get a nice fit and just a little bit of glue clearance in there, okay? So, what you would do to set up this tool path is you take your average thickness of a sheet of plywood. Sometimes I'll just put in 0.5. We know that it actually nets out to be 0.48 or 0.47, but that doesn't matter. So when the tool path calculates for this rabbit, instead of doing the math by starting from the top and pushing the bit down, in this case, let's say a quarter of an inch, it's going to start from the bottom and pull the bit up a quarter of an inch. And that's a critical difference. 
And what that means is that if the thickness of this plywood changes, because we're not zeroing to the top of the plywood and our Z references on the bottom, this rabbit will always come out to the exact same thickness regardless of whether or not this piece of plywood is a little bit thinner or a little bit thicker because the math for where the bit needs to go starts from the bottom and it pulls the bit up a quarter of an inch instead of starting from the top and pushing down. So this has the obvious advantage of making sure that all of your rabbits are consistent all of your dado depths are consistent, and it eliminates the need for having to reset your Z0 at each sheet that comes through. So if you're doing 30 sheets for cabinetry, you just tell the cam software that it's 0.5 thick or 0.47 thick or whatever your common thickness is, and set up all your tool paths, and you never have to re-zero your Z between each sheet. Your Z is always your uh, work surface. So again, the difference between zeroing from the top is the bit starts from the top and it pushes down. And Z zeroing from the work surface means the bit starts at the bottom and it pulls up. Now another workflow that zeroing from the work surface can be advantageous if, is if you are using your machine like a thickness planer. So imagine I have a whole bunch of pieces of wood like this and I want them all planed down to the exact same thickness but my starting pieces all vary in thickness, which might be a reason why I'd want to plane them all down. Well, the annoying workflow would be to measure this with a pair of calipers, Z0 to the top, figure out how deep of a pocket I would need to make and making a new tool path for each piece. The better way to do it would be to Z0 from the work surface and say, make a pocket that is uh, three quarters of an inch thick and remember, that is gonna start from the work surface and pull the bit up three quarters of an inch. So no matter what the thickness of the material I put in here, it's always gonna run a pocket tool path exactly three quarters of an inch above the work surface, giving me a consistently thick board no matter what I put in here. Now, obviously you wouldn't want to put, you know, a two inch thick piece in and try to plane it down to three quarter and put a 0.8 inch thick piece in and try to plane down to three quarter, you'd want to step down your paths, but the math still holds true. It'll always pull that bit up three quarter from the spoil board, making this into a really reliable, really effective thickness planer. Well, hopefully you found that useful. Again, these are the two methods of Z zeroing. Pro tip, whenever you Z zero, make sure that whatever you've done in reality here in your machine is reflected in your cam software. You have to have those right. If you don't have them right, at best, you're gonna be doing an air cut over your work. At worst, your toolpath is gonna to send your bit digging into your work in a way that you're really not gonna like. So make sure those match and you'll be fine. Um, as always, let us know if you have questions and videos that you wanna see. This video right here was inspired by a forum post that I read, so please keep them coming. Hit us up on social, send us emails, and we love hearing from you guys. Uh, happy cutting and have fun out there in the shop. See you on the next one.